Hello everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic back again for night number two. It's time to find out what happened at WWE WrestleMania 40 Sunday. We start with another Meek Mill narrated video package and then the War and Treaty are out to sing God Bless America. Now obviously Triple H opened night one, but it's Stephanie McMahon who introduces us to night two. She says tonight is maybe the mania she is most proud to be involved with because it's the beginning of the Paul Levesque era. And then she says, if I can just steal his catchphrase for a second. And obviously she asks us if we're ready. Oh, you, uh, no, right. We're into our first match. And that first match is Seth Rollins defending the world heavyweight title against Drew McIntyre. Drew gets a guard of honor with sword wielding Highland warriors and bagpipe players. It's really cool. Seth gets um these guys. And as Seth comes out on stage, of course, CM Punk, who is on commentary for this match, remember, says, what a goof. We get the special ring announcements, the bell rings, and then we get an instant claymore from Drew McIntyre and a very near fall. He sets up for a second one, but Seth rolls out of the ring, so Drew goes straight out after him and presses the advantage with a chop block. Then some suplexes around the ring. Then he stops to um, send a tweet at ringside. And if you go on Twitter, you can see it. It just says, bored at work, LOL. Drew sets up for the future shock right in front of CM Punk on commentary, but Seth reverses it and hits a pedigree on the floor. Drew beats the count back into the ring, but Seth hits the stomp, but Drew kicks out and Seth's leg is quite hurt by this point. McIntyre presses the advantage and goes for another Claymore, but Seth reverses it and hits another pedigree. He's favoring the leg, but hits the stomp anyway. One, two, and another very near fall. Drew avoids a top rope stomp. Seth avoids the Claymore, but Drew hits the Future Shock DDT for two. He mocks Punk with the GTS taunt and goes for the GTS, but Seth counters it into a roll-up for two. Drew then hits the ropes and nails another Claymore, but again, Seth manages to kick out. Drew tries to put Seth through the announce table, but Seth elbows his way out of it and hits a running stomp on the surface of the table. Seth gets Drew back in the ring, but Drew hits another Claymore, and again, Seth kicks out. This time, Drew can't believe it and just looks kind of horrified at Seth's resilience, but he hits another final Claymore, and finally, that is enough. Drew McIntyre is the new World Heavyweight Champion. Drew looks emotional after the pinfall, having finally had his title-winning moment in front of a live crowd. Uh, Seth also looks emotional on the outside, too, and says something to Drew. I think it was along the lines of, like, you deserve it, man, and Seth heads up the ramp, and off he goes. Drew celebrates with his family at ringside and raises the belt. It's a genuinely wholesome moment, but he can't help himself. He stares at CM Punk on commentary. He gets on the announce table and holds the belt in Punk's face and talks a lot of trash. They talk trash back and forth. Drew's saying, if you get back in the ring, I'll end your career. Punk's saying... Why are you making your moment all about me now? What are you doing? Drew turns away and poses, and Punk sweeps out his legs. Drew collapses onto the announce table, and Punk beats him down. Punk hits Drew with his cast, his cast on his arm, or like his brace on his arm, I should say. And then Damien Priest's music hits, and here he comes to cash in the Money in the Bank contract. And Punk's face, by the way, is a picture. You can see Punk thinking, brilliant, I'm going to cost Drew the title. Priest runs down, clobbers Drew with the briefcase, gets him in the ring, cashes in, hits his finisher, and Drew's lost the belt already. Damien Priest is the new world heavyweight champion. Drew looks heartbroken in the ring. Punk is laughing, sitting cross-legged on the announce table. And at the top of the ramp, Damian Priest celebrates with his boys the Judgment Day. What a dramatic start to night two. Snoop Dogg is out for guest commentary on the next match, and we've also got a surprise special guest referee. It's Bubba Ray Dudley, it's Philadelphia, ECW, all that sort of stuff, and he looks very happy to be there. This match is, of course, the Philadelphia street fight between the Final Testament and the team of Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. They all have a big stare down to start, and the faces clear the ring. The Final Testament fight back with kendo sticks, though, and all beat Lashley down. The AOP hit the Super Collider on the Street Profits, and then here comes B-Fab to try and help out her allies, not teammates, she's not officially in the match, but but she gets involved anyway. It's no DQ. She has a kendo stick, but then Scarlet gets involved and hits B-Fab with a trash can and throws her out the ring. The AOP look for another Super Collider, but Lashley stops them and the faces take control of the match. Dawkins charges around the ring, tackling both AOP members at the same time before Montez Ford flies over the ring post with his insane dive to the outside. It's always impressive when he does that one. Bobby beats down Cross in the ring with a chair and gets the hurt lock applied, but Scarlet breaks it up, only for B-Fab to now get revenge with a Russian leg sweep off 
off the apron through a table on the outside. Cross hits a DDT onto a chair, but Lashley kicks out at two. Cross isn't happy with the referee. He gets in Bubba's face, so Bubba gets all intimidating and puts his old school Dudley boy's glasses on. Cross isn't interested, turns away straight into a spear from Bobby Lashley. The Street Profits get back in the ring too, and uh, Dawkins plays the role of Devon Dudley, hitting the was up head drop, and then they all tell each other to get the tables. They do get a table and try and set Cross up on it, but unfortunately it collapses, so they just go and get another one. Ford kills time in the meantime by destroying Cross with a kendo stick with some really heavy shots. Uh, then they set him up on the table again. Ford hits the big frog splash. Bobby makes the pinfall, and uh, the baby faces win in a, a very like casual, fun sort of house showy match, it felt. Outside, LA Knight arrives in the Slim Jim's car for his match with AJ Styles, which is up next. Knight makes his entrance first and presents a lucky competition winner with keys to the Slim Jim car. Th this match is um, sponsored by Slim Jim, if you couldn't tell. AJ debuts new music, but we don't hear too much of it because he runs to the ring and wants to get started straight away and they brawl. The fight spills outside and Knight slams AJ's head repeatedly into the announce table so the crowd can go, yeah. Back in the ring, though, AJ starts to work the leg. Uh, he maintains control for the opening portions of the match and heads up top, but Knight meets him and bites his head. AJ goes to the eyes and Knight has to step down into the ring, but then does his leap back up to the top rope in a single bound and hits a huge avalanche German, but it only gets two. AJ gets the calf crusher locked in, but Knight makes the ropes, but Styles isn't really discouraged by this and just keeps going after the leg, drop kicking it into the ring post. He then stands on the outside and goes to pull Knight crotch first into the ring post, but Knight pulls back with his legs and it's AJ's head that goes into the post instead. Knight heads outside now and pulls up the padding at ringside and goes for a powerbomb on it, but AJ backdrops him onto the exposed floor. AJ gets back in the ring and wants to take the count out victory, but Knight just beats the count in time. He then counters a springboard 450 attempt with knees and then both guys are down for a little while. They get back to their feet and start trading strikes and AJ hits the Pele kick. Styles misses a phenomenal forearm attempt but counters the BST into a roll-up, then transitions into a Styles clash attempt, but Knight gets out of it. AJ goes for the forearm again, but this time Knight shoves him and, and he lands ribs first on the top rope. Uh, he gets back to his feet, BFT from Knight, one, two, three and LA Knight wins, yeah! Next, we get the Hall of Fame class of 2024 with Paul Heyman getting the biggest entrance at the end, carrying the undisputed WWE Universal Championship belt, by the way. Next up is the United States title match between the champion Logan Paul and the challengers Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Logan comes out first on the roof of a pickup truck with a giant bottle of Prime in the flatbed bit. Uh, he's accompanied also by a human bottle of Prime mascot. Like last year, it was KSI last year. Will we find out who's inside it this time? Ooh. Owens meets Sam Zayn in Gorilla before his entrance, just like he hyped up Sammy in Gorilla on night one. Zayn has the IC title in his hand and says to Kev, your turn now. Owens drives a cart down the ramp, just like how he chased Logan on SmackDown, but then he backs up for Orton's entrance and gives him a nice lift down to the ring. It's quite fast and Orton looks a little bit scared, and I would be too. The bell rings and Logan immediately bails to the outside, so the faces chase after him and bounce his head around the ringside area. Randy hits his back suplex on the announce table, and then Owens has a go, and then Orton does a bigger one to Logan, and they're just having fun out there, uh, teaming up on the heel champion. Back in the ring, though, Logan shoves Owens into Orton, and it's like, oh, are they going to start fighting because of the miscommunication? But they quickly work out their differences and resume the two-on-one -on attack. It's a nice, quite funny subversion of the usual trope. Both guys go for a pinfall at the same time, though, and now things get awkward between them. Orton tries a sneaky RKO out of nowhere, but Owens blocks it and goes, all right, then we're going to do this, and they start to brawl. Logan takes both out with a double buckshot lariat, and now the match settles down into more of a traditional triple threat, with each man enjoying periods of dominance. This continues until Orton counters a stunner attempt into an RKO, but Kevin kicks out at two. Logan, meanwhile, has slipped to the outside and fetched the brass knuckles and he gets back in and nails Orton after a brief struggle, but Randy manages to kick out just before three. Logan then takes Owens down with the brass knuckles as well and Kev slumps to the outside. Orton is all alone. Logan measures him for a final right hand, but then Orton hits an RKO out of nowhere, but he's still too dazed to make a pinfall attempt. Randy finally gets his wits about him, but he doesn't want to use the brass knuckles and gives them to the referee. That's because he's planning something else and it looks like he's about to hit Logan with the punt kick, but the prime bottle comes to 
to Logan's rescue, pulling him out of the ring. The mascot unmasks, and it's none other than social media YouTube twitchy man, I Show Speed. Uh, he swears a lot, doesn't he? He's a very foul-mouthed young man. Uh, but Randy drops him with a kick to the chest. Orton RKO's Speed onto the announce table, and the crowd absolutely love it, uh, and the match gets back in the ring. Owens hits a pop-up powerbomb onto Logan and a stunner on Orton, but Randy kicks out at two. There's a pop-up powerbomb attempt now on Randy, who impressively reverses it, turning in midair and hitting Kev with an RKO. Logan creeps back into the ring, though, to throw Orton out and steal the win. He does so via a massive frog splash onto Kevin Owens and retains the United States title. Damn you, speed! Next up is the WWE Women's Championship match with Io Sky defending against Bailey. Bailey gets a special entrance. It's ancient Egypt themed with a pyramid on the Tron and she's carried out like an ancient Egyptian goddess, I guess, by masked men and then uh, Io gets a normal entrance. This match is quite even at the start, momentum swinging back and forth between the two until Io smashes Bailey's leg against the ring post. Io presses the advantage for a while and Bailey is really selling the leg. The fight spills to the outside and Bailey throws the champion into the timekeeper's area. Io tries to come back with a dive from the barricade, but Bailey reverses it and slams her onto the floor. Back in the ring, Bailey heads up top, but her leg slows her down and Io takes control, drop kicking Bailey all the way down to the outside, where Io is able to hit her big moonsault onto the challenger. Bailey counters another moonsault attempt back in the ring by getting her feet up, but again, the leg is hurt. She heads up top and misses the elbow drop, with Io immediately locking in a cross face. Bailey rolls Io into a pinfall attempt, so Io has to break the hold, but then the champion gets it reapplied shortly thereafter. She transitions into an STF, now using the injured leg, and Bailey is ready to tap, but she elbows her way bravely out of the submission. She then hits the Bailey to belly, but it only gets two. Bailey sets up for the rose plant, but Io stops her, and it looks like she's about to apologize for all the terrible things she's done, perhaps, but it's just a trick, and she drops Bailey with a big strike. Bailey fires up and says, Io, you were never my friend, and they brawl. Io counters a belly to Bailey with a roll up for two, and then another moonsault attempt hits this time, but Bailey kicks out, and the crowd are really behind behind the challenger at this point. Io hits a standing moonsault, then one from the second rope, but misses the third one from the top, and Bailey hits the rose plant, but Io pops very impressively out of it and lands on her feet. She charges, but Bailey drops her with a clothesline. That's the turning point Bailey needed. She hits the elbow drop and then the rose plant and becomes the WWE Women's Champion. It's a lovely moment for Bailey, and the crowd are very happy for her. After the match, we see some celebrities in the crowd, including T Pain, oh, Teddy Fizzles in the house, and then Snoop Dogg's out with the Philadelphia Eagles cheerleaders to just announce the attendance. Uh, I thought someone was going to be inside the Eagles mascot, but it, it, no. And then Snoop Dogg just dances with everyone and yeah. Main event next. We get our big video package for the main event, which features Cody's journey to this point, including footage of some AEW face as well. It's a bit of a summary of his career so far, almost his roads to WrestleMania. Check out our series of the same name on the Coldaholic audio feed. Anyway, Cody comes out with a special American Nightmare design sort of mask. Brandy's with him on the stage, and this really does finally feel like his big moment. He greets his family in the crowd, and Brody Jr.'s there as well, and we'll have to see if he finally finishes that bloody story. Roman Reigns has a live orchestra. His theme sounds big and epic, and here he comes with Paul Heyman and everything. And the match gets underway. We start with a big, long stare down and, and quite a tentative start to proceedings, but Cody manages to hit his uppercut, and Roman misses a charge in the corner, crashing into the ring post and down to the floor. Cody goes for a table early on, but Roman takes control and then puts the table back under the ring to booze from the crowd. Cody regains control of the match, but Roman has a kendo stick and beats him down with it for a while until Cody manages to get a figure four in the middle of the ring. Roman claws his way out of the hold and gets back on top of things. They then fight into the crowd where Cody hits a vertical suplex. Back in the ring, Cody goes for a disaster kick, but Roman very impressively catches him in a powerbomb position and hits almost like a last ride. At this point, Roman is very much in control now and, and chokes Cody with the bottom rope and says, this is my company, you little bitch. Ooh. Roman gets a near fall off a perfect plex uh, and then Cody fights back with a few super kicks. A little bit later on, he does hit the disaster kick, but it only gets two. Uh, Roman then counters a Cody cut 
cuts her attempt with a crossroads of all things. Cody kicks out and Roman says, that move sucks, to be honest. It won't it won't beat anybody, which is which is quite funny. A Superman punch is avoided and Cody hits the dusty strikes and the bionic elbow. He goes outside and clears the announce table, but Roman hits a low blow and power bombs Cody through. Roman quickly gets Cody back inside and now does hit the Superman punch, but Cody kicks out. Cody avoids a spear and hits the Cody cutter, but he's slow to make the pinfall attempt and Roman now is able to survive. Roman avoids a second Cody cutter attempt, but then Cody avoids a possible rock bottom and then Cody hits the spear on Roman and this only gets two as well. Cody nails the crossroads and sets up for a second one, but Jimmy Uso is in the ring and hits a super kick, but here comes Jay to even the odds and the two brothers brawl on the ramp. Jay wins the brawl in very decisive fashion, spearing Jimmy and they both fly terrifyingly off the side of the ramp through a table below. Back in the ring, Cody rolls up a distracted Roman, but it only gets two. Then Roman hits the spear, but that only gets a near fall as well. Roman slaps on the guillotine, but Cody manages to drive them both through the ropes to the outside of the ring to break the hold. Then he spears Roman through the crowd barricade, which we've obviously seen Reigns do to so many challenges in the past. Back in the ring, Cody hits another crossroads and a second. It kind of feels like the finishing sequence, but obviously here comes Solo Sokoa. Just like last year, he hits Cody with the Samoan spike, drags Roman on top, but Cody kicks out this time. Solo is shocked. Uh, he picks up Cody and shouts at Roman quite aggressively. Could this be a future storyline? I don't know. He shouts at Roman to finish the story. Roman hits the spear, but again, Cody kicks out. However, it is still two on one in the ring, but uh-oh, wabadoo, here comes John Cena. He runs down to the ring, attitude adjustment to Roman, and one on Solo through the announce table, or the Spanish announce table this time, on the outside. But then, uh-oh, here comes The Rock. Uh, we get a big step down between Cena and The Rock in the middle of the ring. The Rock ducks a right hand and nails Cena with the rock bottom. Rock takes his weight belt off and prepares to whip John, but then the Shields music hits, and here comes Seth Rollins with a steel chair, but his run-in is actually very ineffective as Roman immediately takes him out with a big Superman punch. It is quite funny and unfortunate for Seth, but at the same time, it sort of fits the theme of the night because we saw Seth get so beaten down earlier on and the ongoing story of his title reign having, having taken so much out of him, excuse me. But who's gonna save the day now? Oh, yes, indeed. The gong hits and the lights go down. And when they come back up, Undertaker is standing in the ring behind the rock and drops him with a choke slam. Then the lights go down again. And uh, when they come back up, uh, Undertaker's gone. Thank you, Mark. Cheers, mate. See you later on. However, Roman is still fresher than Cody. He picks up a steel chair and smashes Seth Rollins in the back in a very deliberate mirror of the imagery of the shield breakup all those years ago. Uh, then Roman goes for a spear on Cody. Cody kicks him as he charges in and hits a trio of crossroads, makes the cover, one, two, three, and Cody Rhodes has done it. He's finished the story and is the new undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Brandy comes out to celebrate with Cody, followed by various baby faces, Randy Orton, LA Knight, Jey Uso, etc. CM Punk comes out as well and celebrates with Cody, raises his arm, and then Cody does what he said he would do, presents the belt that his father never could win to Mama Rhodes. Quite unusually for WrestleMania, Cody then gets a post-match promo and thanks two people in particular, Bruce Pritchard, and although he says he wouldn't want him to drag him out here, he does bring out Triple H as well. They shake hands and have a few private words away from the mic. And yeah, the post-match celebration continues. It goes on for quite a long while with Cody hugging Michael Cole, shaking hands with Rollins. He hugs Nick Khan, who's in the front row. And all the while, Cole is on commentary saying things like, I love pro wrestling and pro wrestling is back. They are very clearly really pushing this as the start of a new different era. And there you have it. Fireworks go off and everything. Cody's got the belt. And that is how WrestleMania 40 ends. What did you think of the show? Let me know in that comment section down below. A big thank you once again to Owen and Joel for editing this video and the one yesterday as well for night one. And thank you all for watching too. I've been Jack from Caldaholic and I'll see you very soon.